Everybody, I'm David Asman. Thanks for joining us tonight. First up, it's the economy, stupid. Now, if you listen to the exit polls last night, that's what yesterday's elections were all about. Voters worried or very worried about the economy next year totaled 89 percent in New Jersey, 85 percent in Virginia. These are numbers that really haven't been seen since the late 1970s. And with those concerns, voters decided to kick Democrats out of two state houses in Virginia and New Jersey by substantial margins. But inside the Beltway, it's business as usual, with White House, with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi even suggesting that Democrats won last night because of a congressional win. Now, we're going to debate her comments later in the show, but are politicians inside the Beltway aware of the extent to which Americans object to all the recent government spending and government intrusions in our lives? Well, one man who clearly is aware of the discontent is Ron Paul. He has been fighting against government intrusion for some time now, and he joins us. Good to see you, Congressman. Thanks for being here. Thank, Thank you, David. Nice to be with you. So do you feel somewhat vindicated by yesterday's elections? Well, in some ways. Uh, I mean, it's not exactly that uh, each candidate that won uh, was espousing everything that I've said, but I think it makes the point that the people are unhappy and they're punishing the right people, the people who are in charge. Republicans got punished a couple years ago, and, uh, and I think that's appropriate. People are very upset, more so now than ever before, and they're directing their attention to Washington. Uh, the party that's in charge should be penalized, and who knows, this will probably spill over to next year. So. So I think it's, a, it's very good. It's a good trend. And uh, uh, hopefully the Republicans have learned a lesson so that if we do get another chance, we do a heck of a lot better job than we did when we got control before. But frankly, it is business as usual for some politicians. I mean, beyond what Nancy Pelosi said, I understand the Senate just passed a bill to extend unemployment insurance, but tucked very secretly inside that bill was an extension of the $8,000 credit for first home buyers, which had some real questionable uh, results uh, a couple of months ago. Some people saying didn't do anything ex except spend more taxpayer money. Yeah, I don't think anything's really changed here. Uh, if, if they had a concern about uh, our problems and thinking it was related to government spending, why would they offer up all these new programs, you know, this uh, trillion dollar medical package? But I think the absurdity even on the medical package is is that they tell the people, the Pelosi crowd tells the people, well, we're going to be able to insure everybody, but it's not going to cost you anything. We're going to save enough money by cutting waste and fraud. Well, when the American people see that, whether they're conservatives or liberal, I don't think they buy into that. I think they lose credibility on this. But no, it's business as usual, whether it's spending and borrowing and printing money. Uh, and I'm on the Financial Service Committee. It seems like just on a daily basis, all it is is that the solution is if we just had had more bureaucrats to protect us against all these bad investments, but never, never asking the question, well, why are people encouraged to make bad decisions? Does it have anything to do with monetary policy? No, that, that's not really ever discussed. Incentives, you know, you put your finger on exactly the point. They don't understand that if you, if you increase tax rates, People may decide to make less money or hide their money, and maybe they won't get the $400 billion they hope to get from uh, new taxes to fund health care. Yeah, there's always an unintended consequence yeah. that they haven't anticipated. They, they, they don't see you much past their nose. And whether it's domestic policy or foreign policy, I think the unintended consequences of government policies are unbelievable. Mises, the great Austrian economist, said every time the government has an intervention in the marketplace for a so-called good reason, it creates two new problems. And, of course, uh, I think he would be uh, vindicated yeah. on that when you look back over the last hundred years, especially since the Depression, all the interventions that we've had in the marketplace, and they have been able to uh, keep themselves in business. Uh, they, they create more problems, more bureaucrats. Hell, yeah, those are good jobs, of course. Yeah, but you're know, really productive. Congressman, I thought that short of a, a two-by-four whacked across their head, a, an election loss like we saw yesterday in, in New Jersey and Virginia, does have a tendency to shake politicians up because, after all, the one thing they care about more than anything else is getting reelected. Yeah, and that is the case. So they're not seeing the light. Instead of maybe backing off a little bit and thinking about 
uh, the medical package, they've speeded it up. So we'll be here Saturday night. We're supposed to vote for that on that bill, uh, you know, Saturday evening. And uh, it, uh, it, it, it's just more of the same. It will not improve the quality of medical care. It's going to cost a lot more. There will be unintended consequences. The insurance companies will probably be coming out okay, and drug companies will do okay. There will be all kinds of things that, you know, next year the people will be yelling and screaming. But fortunately, there's a significant number of American people right now who are seeing the handwriting on the, war, on the wall, and they are complaining about the process up here. But so far, we, they haven't gotten the attention of the leadership. Well, Maybe not the leadership, but I was talking to some blue dog Democrats today, and they said on air in public that they have serious problems with the Pelosi help. They had problems with the Bacchus bill as well, uh, but the Pelosi bill is even more costly and raises taxes more. They, su they suggest that they're not going to vote for it over the weekend. Is there enough of a revolt now among blue dog Democrats and, of course, all the Republicans so that Pelosi won't have the bill passed? I guess it's always possible. I mean, we've been led to believe today, uh, be prepared, be here, start early Saturday, hopefully get done by Saturday evening. But uh, things do shift. I mean, maybe another 24 hours of thinking about the election, uh, maybe, maybe they will change their tune. It's happened before. Uh, when the American people get really, really outraged, they usually get attention of this place. But uh, unfortunately, things get so bad for so long that it's hard to, uh, you know, turn this battleship or this aircraft carrier around. Uh, we can make efforts, but it is a major problem to reverse the trend because, quite frankly, as much as I'm opposed to all this spending and inflating, to stop it in its tracks and turn it around, you know, there are going to be some people who aren't going to be very happy with this. But if we continue this process, continue this, then we're going to have a bankruptcy which will be manifesting itself in a dollar crisis. And that's what I'm concerned about is this poli the policies that we're following is going to lead to the destruction of our dollar. And I think right now, today, we've noticed that even gold is signaling uh, maybe some significant inflation ahead. Oh, it sure is. There are a whole, whole lot of signs of inflation ahead. But one other big spending bill, of course, is cap and trade. A little later on in this program, we're going to be talking about Al Gore and how much money he's making from uh, certain carbon credit deals that he's involved with, but is, I am told by some people inside the Beltway that cap and trade is a dead deal for this year at least. Are you hearing the same thing? I haven't heard that. I hear the conversation. Let's hope that is true. But uh, that, of course, again, will be a major victory for people who believe in sanity and market play and markets. <laughs> but, but there's still a lot of a lot of pressure. You know, the greatest hoax I think has been around in, in many, many years, if not hundreds of years, has been this uh, hoax on the environment and global warming. You notice they don't call it global warming no, anymore. No, 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 no. It's because it's, it's getting cooler. It's weather control. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. getting cooler. You can't so, call it global uh, warming anymore. But, but it is a monster, and uh, sometimes they're going to have to say, hey, why hasn't the economy improved itself? We pumped yeah. in all, all, you know, the Krugmans of the world. Well, you just didn't do enough. <laughs> right. hey, you know, trillions of dollars from the Fed and $800 billion from the Congress. Well, sure, it's working. You just need more, you know. Uh, someday someday uh, people will come to their senses, but uh, probably not this week yet. <laughs> well, i got to ask you one final question, because you have had some success in getting transparency. People behind you voting for transparency in the Federal Reserve. Are there other issues uh, on which you have been sort of the lone voice in the wilderness where people are finally coming in and joining you? Well, I think on the fiscal policies of just voting against some of the spending, I would hope, I guess I think the sentiment is there, but they don't quite grasp what I'm doing on the House floor because I, I vote for anything that has money in it, every nickel unless you pay for it, not by taxes, but by cutting someplace else. So if there is a program that we want to do, we should cut it from someplace else. I get a lot of sympathy for this and say, you're right, you're right, and we should do this. But uh, I don't think the votes have changed significantly. Uh, I do think the Republicans are voting better. And uh, I kid the other Republican. I said, are you guys voting with me now or am I voting with you? Uh, but we are, <laughs> we are voting together more so than we did when, when the Republicans were in charge of spending yeah, the money. Yeah. And you do have some blue dog Democrats with you as well. Congressman, Dr. Ron Yeah, that's Paul, right. That's good. Great to see you. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you, David.